So I've been back to playing Yu-Gi-Oh for about four years now. I started back up with it during the pandemic and I've loved the game, give or take a format, ever since. Recently though, the game has just felt like a bit of a slog. The changes in card design in the past few sets have really not been my cup of tea, and after a pretty disappointing ban list, I don't see that new direction changing anytime soon. See my video here for more information about what I feel the problem is. I still like the game, but I want to try some other things to see if I could find that spark that Yu-Gi-Oh has without the new baggage. So I looked into Elestral, since so many other Yu-Gi-Oh players seem to be gravitating towards it, and I found this. I knew right then and there that I had to figure out how to break this camel, and I dove in to see what the game's about. After testing around, particularly in deck building, which has always been my favorite part of a TCG, I gotta say, I'm pretty well hooked. The game is good, and it looks to be getting even better as some of the more recent sets iron out some of the kinks. I wanna make Elestral's videos at a similar capacity to Yu-Gi-Oh! videos that I make, but before I do, I wanna go over why I like the game and why I think you should give it a shot. Gameplay feel. The most obvious place to start is just to talk about how the game works, so let's do so. Illustrious is like the Pokemon TCG, if you took out all the parts of the Pokemon TCG that aren't fun, and replaced them with Yu-Gi-Oh! and added a little hint of inscription on top. Much like Pokemon, the game runs on the mana system, but here that mana is separated from the main deck like the Squirrel deck in inscription. The mana here works a bit more like the overlay material of an Ixies monster, needing to be placed under the Illustral on summon. For the Illustrals with larger mana requirements, you can ascend them on Illustral already on the board, like evolving a Pokemon, but more generically applicable like a Tribute Summon. That mana, called Spirits, is also your life points for the game. That means the more you extend, the less life you have, and the more damage you deal, the less options your opponent has to respond. You can only take one spirit action per turn. You can enchant one spirit to cast an Elestral, ascend a higher cost Elestral, attach an extra spirit to an Elestral on field called Enchanting, or expand an Elestral by sending it to the Underworld, which is the graveyard, to draw a card, letting you destiny draw your way back into the game. Your Elestrals will need their spirits too, as if they don't have the same number of enchanted spirits as their casting cost, they destroy themselves. The type matters too, for if the spirit typing doesn't satisfy the casting requirement, the effects of the Elestrals are negated. Those effects, unless passive or conditional, will be soft once per turn, preventing some of the card text bloat from Yu-Gi-Oh. Similarly, the game features a number of keywords that shorten card text as well, even though I'm not a huge fan of the keyword format myself. Much like Yu-Gi-Oh though, there are special casts and ascensions that will allow you to get your Illustrals from the deck and give them a spirit from the spirit deck to work. Any additional spirits for the special ascend will come from the board, just like if you ascend a 3-drop Illustral on a 1-drop by taking from a second Illustral. The attack and defense mode also work much the same as in Yu-Gi-Oh, but normal casting Illustral can be done in attack or defense mode, and damage deal is not based on the attacks at the Illustral, but instead on the difference in attached spirits between Illustrals. This usually means that the damage done is pretty small, lessening the chance of snowballs or OTKs. Very good for a game in which life points are also mana. In addition to having their attack and defense stat and their casting cost, which determines their typing, Illustrals also have their name, title, and subclasses which can be used to build archetypes of synergies, the backbone of all good card games. Most of it currently focuses around typing like Pokemon, but the bear subclass and more frost archetype shows the potential future card design space available for the game, which I'm particularly excited about. Now enough about the creatures, let's get into the rest of the cards. Instead of spells and traps, or items and supporters, we have runes. Invoke runes work like spells. Divine runes, which are all based on Greek deities currently, work like continuous spells. Stadiums work like old school field spells or stadium cards from Pokemon, where there can only be one on the field from either player at a time. Artifacts are like equip spells. And counter runes work like traps, needing to be set for a turn before activated, but then can activate in response to any game action. Much like Yu-Gi-Oh, you can also set any rune that isn't a stadium in your back row as a bluff. All these cards also require spirits to cast, but they aren't connected to your once per turn spirit usage. You can use these cards to get really crazy on a single turn, but they'll burn through your life as you do so. Right now, a lot of these can use any types of spirit, but there are plenty that are locked to specific casting costs. Any deck could still play them with a small investment in the spirit deck, but that could mean running out of your more essential spirit typings. Important calculus for any potential caster. As new sets continue to come out, I expect this to be a design space that is more heavily played with. Uh, like any card game, this is just the basics, a simple rundown of how the game works in its terminology. For anything further, you'll want to consult the how to play guide from the website. Uh, just make sure to download the guide instead of using the pages on the website, those are out of date and have less clear language language in spots. So for me, the fact that I'm able to explain most of this game using Yu-Gi-Oh terminology despite the clear and strong Pokemon influence in the design is a strong indicator to why this game holds that same spark as that game that you and I both love so much. The pace of the game reflects out of Edison era Yu-Gi-Oh, minus an extra deck and with a few more consistency tools, which you all know I love. I love consistency. Edison is one of the most popular formats of Yu-Gi-Oh for a reason, and Elestrals to me feels like a less sluggish version of that. The games are quick and exciting, even when it comes down to passing back and forth while staring down the defense position Astro Rabbit, and there's still a bit of that same combo charm of modern Yu-Gi-Oh here and there in the card interactions, particularly in decks like Morfrost. As far as the gameplay feel goes, I'm getting that same level of enjoyment that I do out of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is not something I can say of many card games. That alone is the biggest factor in me going in on Elestrals, and probably the determining factor in fact, uh, but there's some other factors we should go into, so uh, here goes. Passion. For a card game that's only three sets in as of writing, Daybreak just came out this month, Elestral shows a lot of promise. 
This game is no MetaZoo. The game itself is actually all here and seems to be front and center in the minds of both the creator, A Drive, and of the community at large. The community discord and the YouTube videos surrounding the game more reflect that of the Yu-Gi-Oh community than NFT shills. Everyone involved with this TCG is in love with the game, not the potential value that the cards may have, although if that's important to you, the cards do have some value, trust. This has led to a very cheap meta game, less than 100, usually 30 to 50 bucks for a meta deck with more expensive cosmetics like Pokemon's economic model, but even more so. It's also led to a very passionate player base eager to share their game with anybody who will give it a try. You'll notice a lot of them are Yu-Gi-Oh players, which lends more evidence to what I was talking about earlier about this game having the same spark. The passion in the community is infectious, and it makes the game enticing just on its own. This is especially true when you see that same passion coming from the creator himself, who even does unboxings of his own game to chase for rare cards. That passion for the game also drives him and his team to be constantly listening for feedback on the game and the products. Listening and fixing. So as a new game in the TCG market, things are not going to go perfectly for you. This is to be expected. Even the most established companies fuck things up, and quite frequently, I might add. The main difference I see with Illustrials from most other card games is that they actually care about that and fix it. Isn't that a strange concept? There were production issues with the first two sets, including mappable packs, open packs and sealed boxes, and extremely curly foil cards. Many people were also put off by the only okay art in the first two waves, including myself. I, I wasn't a huge fan of it. The new set, Daybreak, fixes every single one of those issues, with new arts like Pharaohgeist really giving Elestrals its own energy. Now the game no longer looks like it's the fake Pokemon you find in the box the action replay came in. It took only two sets before the Elestrals team responded to the feedback and fixed the game. How long have we been in Snake Eyes format again? How long? The team is also very responsive. Giant Skyhawk, Siberian, and A-Drive are all very easy to get a hold of for anything Elestrals. The community outreach far outpaces much larger projects, and especially Konami, who quite famously is dog shit at communicating anything. Did you know that Elestrals got their first ban list recently? They banned the problem card right from the get-go. No tiptoeing around it and hitting enabling cards like Yu-Gi-Oh would. Spark Kit got blasted to hell. Uh, I mean Tartarus. And the Thunder Nexus deck it was the most unfair part of now is rogue playable instead of dominating the meta. The Illustrials team knows that banning the problem card solves the problem, and that's exactly what they did. This is something Konami still hasn't learned in 25 years. Likely because this game is closer to the ground than Konami's Yu-Gi-Oh! The Card Game, or Pokemon Company's Pokemon The Card Game, or Hasbro's Wizards of the Coast's Match at the Gathering, the people working on it listen to the player base and fix issues when they come up instead of long after everyone's fed up of it and hype themselves into a community anger spiral. There's a reason all the Yu-Gi-Oh players who play Elestrals are happier than the Yu-Gi-Oh players who just play Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Conclusion. Look, I'm not quitting Yu-Gi-Oh anytime soon. I'm just opening up our relationship and bringing in Elestrals too. I just have too much love in my heart for one card game that continuously makes decisions that alienate myself and most of the rest of the player base. I'm sure Yu-Gi-Oh will get better, but Elestrals is good right now, and I think it's going to get even better. I'd rather play a game that's good now than play a game that might be good later, especially considering the price difference between the two. Are there things I don't like about Elestrals? Sure, of course, it's me. I can always find something to whine about. Like the fact that because mana and life are one and the same, it makes it harder to come back from the brink if you're losing badly. I hate that shit. But I like the game, and I'm gonna play a game that I like, and I'm gonna make videos about it as I do, and hopefully you'll join me on this new journey of making both Yu-Gi-Oh! and Elestral videos, and hey, maybe you'll like the game too. I hope you give it a shot, and thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. Just another experiment for new avenues for the channel to take. Let me know what you thought of it down below, and of course, like, share, subscribe, join the Patreon, become a YouTube member, have your name scrolling right by here, and most importantly, take care of yourself. Bye.